of separation between uh, Kosovo and southern Serbia where former uh, Uchika insurgents moved into that area which was a safe haven and started killing people in southern Serbia by large numbers. I was not entitled and not allowed to go into that area by uh, uh, Robertson. He said, don't start the new war. But I was constantly under fire by President Tchaikovsky in Macedonia. He said, you have to do something, otherwise this will also affect my country. So we basically went in after the training camps of those insurgents and we basically tried to dry them out, getting the, monies out, the, the weapons out. And one day we knew that quite a few of these insurgent leaders would leave the zone of separation for a barrier in Glian. So I called my brigade commander and said, this is the chance, go and arrest them and get them into Camp Bonsteel in the detention facilities. And I called my boss, General Clark, and said, sir, today we'll probably can have a breakthrough in, in the pressure of any problems by uh, getting them. He said, great, Klaus, do that. In the evening, nobody called me. Nobody gave me, gave me any report. So I called my brigade commander, Rick, Rick Sanchez, and I said, Rick, how many of these insurgents have you caught? And he said, sir, not. And I told him, this cannot be true, because we basically agreed that this is the big chance. Why did you not get any? He said, I was called by my national European U.S. commander, the same General Clark, who told me go after them, told them, don't go because we are here to support the Albanians and we will not go against the Albanians. So you can imagine for me as a commander, this was unbearable. So I called my boss in the night and I said, sir, please come tomorrow morning and take my job as okay for it because I lost all my confidence in you and I cannot work with you anymore. Next morning he came, and if you look at the faces which you see here, a, a, a picture which my aide has taken, we are not at good terms by that. Um, and General Clark then told me it was a political decision by the Secretary of General of the United States uh, to not to apprehend, not to arrest any Albanians. So I said, why don't you have Mrs. Albright coming over, being the new commander K4? That might be another possibility. Uh, we solved this situation then that Mrs. Albright called me in the morning. We called her in the middle of the night and she said we probably did not coordinate this accordingly and this will never happen again and it did not ever happen again. So, ladies and gentlemen, for K4 we had four key things which we wanted to do. One is to show military force by supporting the local population and to tell the Serbians don't come back we're here and tell the Uchika, you don't have to continue to fight, we're doing this for you. Number two, we wanted to reconstruct the country as much as possible at that early time, because at the early time, most of the NGOs which are in the country today have not been there by that time, and we had to do something to get over the winter. The third thing is that we wanted to go back to policy, and together with Beza uh, Lucia sitting over here, we basically started and thought about having a concert, the first concert, classical concert in Kosovo, which we had, and if you look at those faces, which are very difficult to, under, to, to see, everybody who had a saying in Kosovo was there, and it was a fantastic concert. And it was not the concert which was so important for me, it was the, the attempt to come back to normalcy, and culture is a part of the normalcy after a war, the same was Luan Bulici, Bulici, who basically helped us in the uh, 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 art academy to have the first exhibition. Terrible pictures, if you look at this picture, you know. NATO, de NATO de defends Kosovo. This terrible picture is today in, in the museum in Dresden, military museum. And we asked the local people here and the soldiers of K4 whatever they have painted in oil or in watercolor to, to exhibit. And we had long lines of people wanting to see that again back to us. And ladies and gentlemen, I was shocked here if, once I saw this city for the first time. It was the most dirty city I've ever seen in my life. 
There was no trash disposal. Nobody took care of that. From the third and the fourth floor, everything was thrown out of the window and it was staggering up. So <coughs> we said, we have to set an example and start cleaning that country. And it was in the middle of the week around the university that I went with my staff and started cleaning. My chief of staff, a British two star, said, Sir, this is too much. We are not cleaning their dirt. I said, we'll do that. We'll give them an example and show them that they, it's no use to wait for the future. If you don't take the initiative, you should still for yourself. You will basically destroy this country for the future generation. And the future generation, seeing this kind of creeks where the cars were disposed just by throwing them into the rivers, was not the ideal way. It took a very short period of time and we have hundreds of students with those blue backs joining us cleaning the country, which I think was a big success for us. Overall strategy for the Balkans by that time, no. No. There was only a little strategy for Kosovo, a little one for Bosnia and Herzegovina, but no joint policy and no strategy combining all these different parts of politics. Nevertheless, we tried, Werner Kushner and myself by that time, not knowing about the comprehensive approach, we tried to work as closely as possible. We met every day, every day, over seven months, no day excluded, for one or two hours to solve problems which were military or civilian problems. And I told Ben Akushna, I put all my soldiers on the command, which NATO didn't like at all, but I said, there's only one way who is the speaker, and this is the political one, and I will back you up. And we were called the twin brothers because wherever it was possible, we came together to show uh, that we wanted to do something together. We had weekly meetings with the uh, national representatives. There were no ambassadors by that time, but to exchange ideas. We had bi-weekly meetings, strategy meetings, with all the key stakeholders in the country in order to inform each other and in, in order to basically coordinate as much as possible. This is all what comprehensive approach is all about today. And I think in this regard, we were rather successful and we had a big legitimacy and the legitimacy was that the people in the country told us that they liked what we were doing. And our soldiers were kissed, and one morning when I was running, I saw this here called NATO, I love you, I thought, mustn't be so bad. And the best, the best thing was the Millennium's night, when I went down there, and it was snowing very heavily, we got stuck with our Jeep because the snow was so high, and we were afraid, Arben, that all hell would turn loose at the New Year's night as we had it before in San Diego. It was a total quiet night. No electricity, no lights, but tens of thousands of people basically walking in downtown Pristina, celebrating the New Year's night, uh, basically congratulating them that this was the first night in freedom. And when we came down there, my aide and myself, we were kissed and hugged and carried around. And my soldiers were kissed and hugged because people told us, we are happy that you did it for us. And I think this was the biggest reward we ever could get. Did we call for independence? Yes, sure we did. I was not allowed to take this word independence of Kosovo in my mouth because this was a political declaration. But I think it was impossible not to tell people what I was standing for. And sure, we came there to fight for an independent Kosovo because we could not imagine that Kosovo would go back on the Serb of Germany without starting a new war. And I was very happy when Hafim Saatchi declared independence and when uh, and we celebrated back home and we celebrated in Germany. And we were very happy that the European Union basically said we will basically play a major role for this new independent country by having a U.S. special representative and to have ULEX in order to take the Kosovo government by the hand. Whether they do it in the appropriate way or not, it's up to you. Uh, I don't know that. But I think the basic idea was a rare appropriate one and I would like now, since we also have the situation that the Serb uh, 
request of the United Nations has been turned down, and even Putin couldn't do much. And the International Court of Justice said that the Declaration of Independence is in according with the international law. I hope that also those five European nations who have are, are who are still against the independence of Kosovo will turn in because otherwise the European Union will have a major problem in executing their policy. So a little bit more of the Atisari plan has to be brought into the flavor of Kosovo, I think, in order to help and to increase the situation for those youngsters. The picture which I have taken closely to prison, a young Turk, a young Albanian and a young Serb who were playing together like any other kid in the world. And I think we were not here as K4, and K4 is not here to support the Kosovo Albanians. We are here to support the Kosovars, no matter what ethnic group uh, they belong to. And I think the biggest, the biggest reward for us is that we could change the country within the last 10 years from chaos and anarchy in a country which has found a lot of normalcy in those 10 years, and seeing the difference is a great thing. For me, the question was when I moved out, how can I stay in touch with Kosovo as a soldier? And uh, Beza Lusha, by that time,